Hello, this is Math Point 16, Radian versus Degrees, Trigonometry, and Trigonometry Identities. On the digital SAT, there are some questions sometimes that covers radian versus degrees um, or trigonometry, um, which is something that looks like this. And you should learn this in your geometry class in school. If you haven't, then uh, I'll teach this lesson a little bit differently. We won't go in depth with what you will be learning in, um, in your geometry class. We'll just cover some basics, and for the rest, you will learn it in your math class, and then after you learn it in your math class, come back to this lesson, and things should just make sense. So that means we won't really go into the trig identities that you'll learn, uh, for example, sine squared plus cosine squared plus one, um, and I will just give it to you, and but just know that they exist, and you will not really need to know that much about trigonometry for the digital SAT. So starting from the top, radian versus degree. On the SAT, you need to know how radian and degrees are converted from one to the other. And here, I will create a text box. Give me one moment. Okay, and radian and degree, they may look kind of confusing at first, but they're really just two ways of showing degree angles. So one radian is equal to 180 over pi degrees. Okay. Over pi So this is kind of like in math, you know that there are um, inches and feet, or there are centimeters and meters, and you can also convert between inches and centimeters, and when you do that, you have one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So it's like that, where, but for degrees, it's one radian equal to 180 over pi degrees. Or if you multiply pi on both sides, then on left side, 1 times pi, you get pi. And on the right side, multiply 180 over pi by pi, you end up with just 180. So you can also say that pi radian is equal to 180 degrees. And that's all. That's what radian and degrees are. It's like inches and centimeters. And if you do the math, you can convert from one to the other. I don't think I need to really go over all of them. They should be self-explanatory. Use this ratio, pi radian is equal to 180 degrees. So if you have pi divided by six radian, then you divide this by six, you end up with 30 degrees. Okay. And I'll leave the rest for you to do because I hope and think the rest are pretty simple. Here's a sample SAT question. The measure of angle B is 2 over, pi, uh, 2 over 5 pi radians. If the degree measure of angle B is x, what is the measure of x? So you have some kind of angle. If this question is confusing, then you can just draw something on the side. You have an angle, and this angle is B, and the measure of this angle B is 2 over 5, five pi radian. I'll draw it like this, Ooh, 2, 5, pi radians. Okay, I'm trying to find what this is in terms of degree. So you're using this formula to convert from pi, from radian to degree again. And when you have a certain radian, you follow this formula. So pi radian is 180 degrees. And now you have 2 over 5 pi radian. So that is taking this number, 180, um, times 2 over 5. Or if, if that's confusing, then you can just use the, the, form, the, the ratio. So the ratio here is pi radian over 100, 2 over 5 pi radian. This is this, and the bottom is this. And this ratio is equal to 
180 degrees that's this over a certain number of degree that you're trying to find out and these ratios are the same so you can remove simplify the top and the bottom you can further simplify the top and the bottom you can simplify the top and the bottom and so you're left with this this is the ratio 1 over 2 over 5 is equal to 180 over x we'll do cross multiply you have x is equal to 180 times 2 over 5 that's what I had earlier before here also so this would equal to uh, 72 if you do the math so the answer is 72 degrees Hopefully that's not too hard. Um, and here is another question. An arc of a circle measures 2.4 radian. So now we have a circle. I'm going to remove the notes for this. For number two, we have a circle. Let me get bigger. And it says there's an arc of a circle. So arc is part of a circle. So it's like this part of the circle. Let me get blue. And that part is 2.4 radian. And you're trying to find out what the radian is in terms of the degree. Now we have a pie shape. And I'll make it more right angle like. Uh, sorry, angle like. So we have this shape, this is the arc, and that's the angle. When it asks you for the measure of an angle of this arc, then you're looking for this measure here. But this angle is whatever this is converted to degrees. Converted to degrees and degrees. So it's another conversion question. Convert 2.4 radian into degrees using the ratio we have above, and you get the answer. So I'll let you do the math. And if you understand the idea, then maybe the math isn't that important because it's just about using the calculator to find out the answer. It's whether you, whether you know that the, when the question says the arc is 2.4 radian, you're looking for this angle, and this angle is just a conversion. It's whether you understand that logic. Now we have, now there's gradient and radian, but don't let the new term gradient confuse you. Gradient and radians are units used to measure angles. A right angle is equivalent to this much radian or this much gradian. How much gradients are equivalent to this radian? If seeing the new term um, is confusing, then this question will be very confusing. But if you understand that the question is telling you, basically telling you the answer to um, how to solve this problem, then, then maybe it's pretty easy. So the question, it's like the ratio that we set up above here. The question tells you that you have a right angle, which is pi over 2 radian, and it tells you that is equal to 100 gradian. Now it's asking for how many gradients are equivalent to pi over 80 radian. So you have pi over 2 radian over 100 radian is equal to pi over 80 radian over x radian. And it's just a matter of cross multiplying and finding x. So I won't go into the math and the math isn't that important for now for you to understand the question. The challenge and the point that I want to make sure that you understand is how to get from the question to this ratio and you get that because the question gives you a kind of like a formula or a ratio for how radian and gradients are converted from one another pi over 2 is equal to 100 grad gradient so pi over 80 radian is equal to some number of gradient and you can find the x this is another question about converting between radian and degree, so I'll let you do that. And same with this question, so I'll let you do that. Um, these questions are hopefully pretty straightforward. Just as long as you know what one radian is in terms of degree, or the other way, what um, one pi radian is in terms of degrees, then these questions should all be pretty easy. 
Now let's move on to trigonometry. In math, one of the first things in your geometry class when you're learning trigonometry is about sine, cosine, and tangent. I won't go into too much detail on that because uh, it would take a little bit too long to go over what you're learning in your math class for weeks if we're trying to give you a crash course on the SAT math. Uh, but for just to go over that really, really quickly for now, sine of x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. This is what you should learn in your math class. And in this drawing here, if we have a being here, b being here, then sine of x, of this angle x, opposite is the b side, and hypotenuse is the c side. So this is also equal to b over c. Imagine there's a over sign here. This is a fraction. For cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And adjacent in the drawing at angle x is side a. So this is a over c. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Oh, so, yeah, opposite over adjacent. So this is opposite opposite over adjacent and that is b over a if this doesn't make sense to you if this is the first time you're hearing this and it's not making sense then don't worry just wait until in your math class you learn about these and uh, come back to this unit again and you'll understand what's going on here um, this should be for now just a quick review for students who have learned um, trigonometry have learned about this um, and have heard of something called Sol Ka Toa as a quick refresh about the things you learn in your math class. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so cosine is adjacent of hypotenuse, C A H Ka and T O A Toa. It's a shorthand to remember the three identities. If you ever see a minus one, then it's like the flip of the angles. So instead of being opposite of a hypotenuse, sine is then hypot uh, hypotenuse over opposite and cosine is hypotenuse over adjacent and so on but you won't see this on the current digital SAT anymore so we're gonna put an X over this and skip this and in the current SAT you will also not need to know any of these trig identities. So if uh, you just want to crash course and skip everything that I'm covering here. But if you want a, a refresh, then sine of x, write this in number one here, sine of x plus cosine, uh, sine of x squared plus cosine of x squared is equal to one. And then sine of x is equal to cosine of 90 minus x. And sine value is always between negative 1 and 1. And so is cosine of x is always between negative 1 and 1. But if this doesn't make sense to you, then don't worry about it. It doesn't really show up on the SAT anymore. And neither do you need to know whether sine, cosine, and tangent are in certain quadrants. So we're going to skip that altogether also and just move on to the questions and see how knowledge about trigonometry can help you with these questions. In a right triangle, so we have a right triangle, good to draw them on your scrap paper. Tangent. Tangent, at the top we said tangent is TOA, so that means it's opposite over adjacent of one of the two acute angles. It doesn't tell you which one, so um, plug, assume any one of them. Assume this one. Angle, tangent of this angle, of the two acute angles, is square root of 3 over 3. Tangent is opposite, so that means opposite is here. This is square root of 3 over 3, hype over adjacent. So that means this adjacent at the bottom is 3. 
what is the tangent of the other acute angle? The other acute angle is this one now, with a thicker line. What is the tangent of this angle? So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is negative 3 over adjacent. Adjacent is screwed of 3. So the answer is opposite 3 over screwed of 3. So the answer is D. Now, the two acute angles of a right triangle. So again, we have a right triangle. Have degrees measures x and y. So we label them as x and y. If sine of x is this, sine of this angle of x, is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is opposite over hypotenuse. And it's this. So that means they are in a ratio of 5 to 13. What is the value of cosine of y? y is this angle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And it's adjacent, 5, over hypotenuse, 13. So the answer is 5 over 13. Number three, we have these two triangles. A, B, C, and D, E, C are right triangles. If C, D is 20, so we label C, D as 20. And tangent of angle A, B, C of this angle here is 2.5. Tangent means opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side of this side is the whole bottom side and this is 2.5. But it's not exactly 2.5, it's, it, it's in a ratio. So this is 2.5x over the adjacent. This is the ad adjacent. And this side, you can call that as x. That's a ratio between this side and this side. 2.5x over x. What is the length of segment ED? And you're trying to find this. Okay, a lot of things going on, but if we dissect this question slowly, we'll be able to find this pretty easily. It tells you that this side is 2.5x and this side is x. That's the, the ratio between these two sides. So that means if this big triangle has that ratio 2.5x to x, the smaller triangle should also have a ratio of uh, 2.5x to x. So, um, and the reason is that because these two triangles are similar. And before we talked about, if you have similar triangles, then the sides, the ratio of the sides are the same. So what that means is, if this side is 2.5x, and you're trying to find this, uh, you're trying to find this, and the ratio of sides are 2.5 to x. So we can set up a ratio here and say the bottom side, 2.5x, to the vertical side, x, has the ratio of 20 over something. And we're trying to find this something. Now we have the ratio. We can just find the ratio. Um, let's make that equal in case my writing is confusing. 2.5x over x, there's an over sign here, and there's an over sign here. And the x gets crossed out, so it's 2.5 over 1 equals 20 over, we're trying to find that value. So cross multiplying gets us 20 times 1 divided by 2.5, and the math comes out to 8. So the answer is 8 for this one. Okay, we'll do one last question here. In the right triangle here, A, B, C above, BC is 8 if cosine of angle x. The angle x is here. Cosine means it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So if the ratio of this triangle from the adjacent here is square root of 3 x to the hypotenuse, and that's 2x. That's a ratio. From this side to this side is that to that. What is the length of AB? You're trying to find this length. 
If the question gives you the cosine of x is square root of 3 over 2, and it would be nice to find out what this angle is, what x is, before you find out the side, ab, you can use decimals calculator to find the value for the x because if the question gives you cosine of x, so cosine of x, you don't know what x, what x is, but decimal will tell you later. Cosine of x is equal to square root of 3 over 2. And you're trying to find what x is. Even though you could remember that this triangle has a setup of x, 2x, square root of 3, x ratio, like the, uh, what the, the reference table gives you. But if you don't remember that, you plug that into the calculator and you can find x by looking for where the line is. And so here, if you zoom out, you can see that cosine of x equals to square root of 3 over 2 at x equals a few points. x can equal to here, which is negative 30 comma 0. So x can be negative 30. x can be positive 30. x can also be different values here. But for a triangle, we know that the angle of a triangle has to be between 0 and 180. So from 0 and 180, the only possible value for x here in a triangle for this angle here, uh, sorry, for this angle here, has to be 30 degrees right here. So from the calculator, we know that this x here is equal to, equal to, is equal to, is equal to 30 degrees. And now we know that we can find this side by using a trigonometry, a trig identity again. We know this side is 8. We're trying to find this side. Let's call it uh, y. And we know the angle here. So we have the, uh, the hypotenuse. We have the opposite. So that calls for sine of a particular angle, in this case 30, is equal to opposite, which is y over a hypotenuse, which is uh, 8. So we have this fraction here. And what is sine of 30? If you don't remember, sine of 30 is 1 half. You can plug that into a calculator. Sine of, sine of 30 degrees equals 1 half. By the way, when you're, if this is a degree, Make sure that on the decimal calculator you set this to degrees and not radian. If you set this to radian, you end up with the wrong number. This has to be degrees. Sine of 30 degrees is 1.5. Uh, so this number here is 0 0.5 is equal to y over 8. So multiply 8 on both sides, you end up with y equals 4. And there you have it, the answer for this is y equals 4. Go ahead and do these practice questions, and I'll see you in the next math point. Bye.